Good afternoon, Chief reporting here for CTT. Yes, I missed last week. Needed a haircut. I'm going to try to maintain my military standard while I do these. I've tried the long hair since I retired and just doesn't cooperate or look right. Plus, my fiance likes me in shorter hair. Just when I think I'm done talking about Fort Riley, I'm not. I don't remember if I talked about BNOC or my 577 training. I'll do my class first. Uh, while I was still in the S3 shop, I do believe, is when I went to BNOC, because I went during the summer. I don't exactly remember which summer. And of course, back then we called it Beer Knock because you drank a lot of beer and didn't learn all that much. Because basically, it was just a refresher course with new emphasis on becoming a section sergeant or a squad leader or possibly a platoon sergeant. We did a little bit more in the uh, forms of uh, taking care of your soldiers, counseling them, and just studying everything that you studied prior in 98 Charlie School. Uh, BNOC at that time was at Fort Devens, so I got to go back to Fort Devens and basically became a barracks rat because I did not drive and did not get the use of a car, so and nobody really wanted to ride the train to go to Boston. I couldn't get anybody interested in going to Boston. Plus, we also did uh, CQ for the uh, students, the ones that were in training for Zero Five Hotel, which I was when I was there, to relieve the drill sergeants to give them some free time on their weekend. So we did that duty too. And, I basically sold my services. People would get the duty and they'd be like, oh man, I want to go to Boston. I'm like, well, throw 20 bucks at me. I'll do your watch. So I did that a lot. Uh, we, uh, like I said, we just did a recourse of what you've already previously learned. So when we did our practical exercise, we failed the initial thing. Uh, the initial reporting that we got for the exercises, there were already bullets and artillery rounds flying back and forth across the border where we were fighting. So we, as a bunch of 98 Charlies, assumed somebody had already made a declaration of war. They, nobody had not. Supposedly the first reports were the first indicators that a war was in the making. So that's the only part we failed. The instructor said that we worked together as a team, which he didn't see all that often there. We did really good on reporting on everything else that we were supposed to and compiling everything else. And also we had to give a 15, maximum of a 15 minute brief. 12 minute minimum, 15 minute maximum. They had a list of subjects. Uh, I picked something about the Special Forces. I can't remember exactly what it was specifically that I talked about, but this was back in the day when you made your slideshow and then you printed them off on sheets of plastic, uh, letter-sized sheets of plastic, and then you put them on an overhead, and then you would, the overhead would put your slide on the wall. So I made my slides, and of course I read my, or I did my speech, practice my speech and of course I did it in like 10 minutes, 11 minutes, I don't remember and I was like well I really didn't flip the slides over myself so that'll kill some time too. A lot of people use fellow students to flip their slides, I didn't, I had quite a number of slides because uh, when you make a slideshow you just put bold points, you don't put like a whole sentence, you just put like you know the dog jumped over the fox, you put the dog and then you explain about it. So I just put bold things like that. That's what they taught us. You know, you don't want your audience to read your slides. You just want bold points and then you can talk about them. Uh, some of my classmates were long-winded like I was and I noticed that my fellow students were pulling out their watches and they were doing their looking down and trying to be secretive but the, cl the class instructors were all in the back because they had stopwatches and they were watching us so Plus, you know, after so many classes, you get wind of the tricks that everybody tries to do. So once in a while, you know, they would do the, the sleeve or the neck rub, you know, and your slide, you know, and your talk, and your talk, you know, you're, you're running out of time. Well, I didn't pay attention to that until panic time at the last minute. I didn't know how long I was talking. 
and I was flipping my slides like I said and I had rehearsed it a couple times and then when I flipped the slides I was at the 12 minute mark and I'm like yeah okay that's what I need 12 minute minimum 15 minute maximum well at the last minute I was noticing quite a few people were doing the oh kill 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 stop 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 and I had maybe two or three slides to go before I got and there was no question and answer period it was a bit say basically give a give your presentation do it in 15 minutes like you're giving a brief to a general so I speeded up my slides and a big sigh of relief came over my classmates one of the instructors he looked at his stopwatch 14 minutes 59 seconds my class instructor or my uh, coordinator my guidance counselor whatever you want to call him 15 minutes one more second and you would have had to redo this and you would have done a great job so I did the maximum amount of time so when I left good old Fort Devens again got to Boston that was a struggle I they have a shuttle service like Five bucks, I think it was. A bunch of us got together because it was like a, um, a van bus. And we ordered one and it never showed up and it never showed up. And then finally another one showed up for some other people. And we're like, hey, do you have room? Because we called like an hour ago and this guy still hasn't shown up. And I probably wish I'd my other one had shown up because when I finally got to the Boston airport, my plane was broken. So everybody on my flight was scrambling to all the other airlines in the Boston airport and we were trying to get seats so we could get, well, I was supposed to fly to Wichita, that's where the wife was going to pick me up, but I can only get you as far as Kansas City today. I said, okay, so I got my flight information, got to a phone booth inside the airport, you, can't, you don't see those anymore. I think I called my wife both at work and at home because we had an answering machine. So I gave her all the information in case I didn't catch her at work. And I said, I will be sitting outside the terminal of the airline that I'm flying on at Kansas City. Well, between Wichita and Kansas City is a toll road and uh, everybody flies on that 80 miles. A lot of people do so I figured by the time I got to Kansas City I'd probably have to sit there for about a good hour but my wife made arrangements to get off work early and so I got to Kansas City moseyed off the airplane I've got time to kill I went and got my luggage I got time to kill I went to I went outside the luggage thing and made sure that it said the proper airline above me and that's where I'm going to sit and wait for her. I bought a soda. I threw down my two duffel bags, put, put them one on top of the other, put the softer one up on top. And well, this is where I'm sitting for the next hour. I sit down, start to unscrew my soda, and I look, and there's my wife. I said, you flew. She goes, you're darn right I did. So we got back home. So that was my B-knot. Nothing really average student. Oh, I got offered a job to become a student instructor there or become an instructor for BNOC. Turned it down because one, I didn't like the New England area because I already knew all about it from my previous days going through the 05 hotel school and uh, insurance is ungodly plus uh, they have traffic circles and the magic to driving in New England back then in the traffic circle is if you don't look because you're, as you're trying to get on a traffic circle, you're supposed to yield to traffic already on it. So if you're not looking, they're going to let you on because they don't want to have a collision. But if you are looking, you're not, you'll never get on. You'll get on eventually when there's a break in the traffic. So between those two things, I was like, no, nope, don't really want to come here. And plus, I don't think the missus would like to be an instructor. But that is one of those decisions that you make where if I had accepted the schoolhouse job would my life have been different rather than going to Hawaii I'll talk about that when I go to Hawaii uh, when we got back from Desert Shield Desert Storm uh, finally all our equipment came home 
I went through the staff sergeant who got promoted while we were overseas. He took over the squad briefly before he went to the 18 series schools. That's the one that wrote me my NPAC AAM for my uh, signing of the building, barracks building. And then, uh, Little Miss, you've got more points than I've got, and you haven't even gone to the board yet. Uh, she took over, she took back and charge for about a month, and then she got the, uh, she re-enlisted while we were in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and she got the college option that they were offering back then. So for two semesters, uh, one school year, you were a student, and you didn't have to show up to very many military functions except the ones that they made you to. But basically, you were a student, so you were in the Army, but you were a student for a good half of a year to go to school and get your college, start your college or finish up some college. So then uh, when my wife went to Alpha Company over to the Ace, where I was supposed to go originally when I left S3 shop, she got shoved over there when her company got back because they ostracized her by saying, you didn't go to war with us, so we're going to punish you by making you leave our company. Whatever. So they had extra sergeants over in the ace, so one of them came over who was, turned out to be a good friend. So he's like, uh, you've been in S3 shop, and now you're here at Charlie Company, and you still don't know how to drive the 577. I go, no, no one's taken me out. I said, I've been behind it. I've started it numerous times. I played with the lat, the laterals. The laterals are the two shifts that control the tracks on each side of it. So however you pull them or break them is how the 577 track vehicle moves. So he dispatched it for the day. He took me out or he drove it out and we went to an open field and he says, okay, get behind it. And so I tore up an open field. I was doing donuts and everything else, figure eights, because he wanted me, you know, to turn the, turn the lat so I can go left, go right, however he said. So I was making, tearing up a field. It was fun, 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 fun. So then we went on one of the uh, roads, one of the dirt roads behind all the motor pools, one of the main ones, and because there was this hill, typical, peak or the top of the hill and the top of the hill and this big big bull valley in the middle of it so to speak not really that bad of a U, but you get my picture because you go down really steep and you climb really steep a little bit and the track for the track to handle it and plus humbees can do it too so we got up to the top of our side and we looked over to the other side it was clear but down below was dust was just billowing up billowing up and we could see uh, an Abrams tank. Not an Abrams. Oh my God, a Bradley. No, Abrams tank, Bradley fighting vehicle. Okay, Abrams tank. Oh boy. So we saw an Abrams tank coming up, kicking up all this dust. And we're looking, 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 or at least uh, Scott is. That's my squad leader, Scott. He was up in the hatch and he was looking. He says, uh, okay, he says, uh, we can start to go. So this tank came up, got on our top. Scott says, okay, let's go down. So we went down and it's dusty. I can just barely see the road. And all of a sudden I hear, don't panic, but gently pulled the, 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 the 577, go to the right, slowly, not quickly, slowly, get, you know, get over. So just as I got the 577 over where he was happy, here comes this other Abrams that was in the cloud of dust behind the first one. Uh, if I had stayed in the position where I was and we didn't see it, he would have, we would have connected. And being that the Bradley has track higher than my front end, he probably would have climbed and probably would have climbed and maybe placed it upon my head, I don't know. So I, that's my only experience of driving a 577. I had lots of fun. We also had deuce and a halves. I never drove one of those. I got to drive a five ton lighter, which I will talk about when I get to Fort Stewart in Georgia because I became a master driver for the five ton. I miss driving a five ton. So that was my experience with the 577. And we now have thunder. So maybe we're gonna get another storm today. That would be nice. We need the rain. 
It's been dry here lately in San Antonio. So this is Chief signing out. Remember, freedom's not free. Hug a vet, thank a vet, kiss a vet if you can. And see you next week, and I'll still be in Fort Riley, unfortunately. <laughs>